Hello everybody, I'm Miss Lisa, and welcome back to another episode of Art Tree Goes Almost Live. We're starting our winter session now, and we are going to be doing drawing classes on Tuesdays and watercolor classes on Wednesdays. So kids, grab your pencils and your watercolor paints and join us for drawing and painting. We're going to be starting with our drawing class, and today I'm going to tell you how to draw a patterned peacock. And tomorrow in the watercolor class, I'll show you some fun things you can do with paints. But let's start with the peacock. I call this the patterned peacock because as you can see, there are patterns on this piece of paper here. Pattern means a repeating color or repeating shapes or repeating lines, sometimes even textures. In this case, we can see very clearly some repeating colors. And let's take a look at those colors. You can see in the large tail feathers a pattern of green, orange, green, orange, green that continues all the way around. And on those individual feathers, we see patterns of shapes. In the orange feathers, we see triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle. And in the green feathers, we see crescent up, crescent down, crescent up, crescent down. It continues like this. Now peacocks have those really amazing big tail feathers. And when they open their feathers, it almost looks like a big sunshine of feathers. And I'm going to show you how to get that effect in this drawing. They also have smaller feathers along their back of their body. And those are these little feathers that I've uh, drawn here with a bumpy line. And I'll show you how to do that. The bird itself has a nice long neck. It's pretty a slender body, a nice long neck, kind of a small head. And then it's got these feathers on top of its head that kind of look like lollipops, almost <laughs> like little tiny lollipops. And so we're going to put some of those on the top of the head. We'll have a nice slender long neck. And in this case, the uh, feet. I don't have the feet in this frame of the picture. We've got the body, the neck, the head, the beak, these little uh, feathers on top of the head, and these lovely feathers on the body, and then these big tail feathers behind. So let's get started. I'm going to be using today, I've got a selection of pencils here. I'm going to be using my 4B pencil. And the B just means it's going to be a bold line. 4B is pretty dark. I like working with a dark pencil. You can use any pencil that you like. Try not to erase if possible. See if you can do this without erasing. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a border around my piece of paper. And this just makes a nice frame for my drawing. You can see that I've done it here. I've done um, a rectangle border. And then I've left the outermost part of my paper white. And that just makes a nice white frame for my artwork. This is even more important when we start painting because if we make a nice white border and we keep our painting inside that border, then we keep our table clean and we don't have so much cleanup afterwards. You know how it is when you get paint all over the table and then your paper gets in the paint and what a mess, right? So we can not do that if we make a nice white border on our paper and then keep that border white. Now I'm going to start by drawing a border. And for those of you that have had me as a teacher before, you'll know that a simple way to draw a border is to put a dot in each corner of the paper. Four corners, so I've got four dots. 
and then I'm going to join those dots with a straight line. And I find it easier to turn my paper so I've got it on a diagonal. I'm going to draw. I'm not using a, a ruler. I'm not being perfect. It's absolutely fine. So I've turned my paper a little bit. I'm still working on the diagonal. And I'm going to turn my paper again so I can continue working on the diagonal. I find it much easier to draw borders when my paper is at a diagonal. Okay, so I have a border now. I'm going to be working on the body. Let's take a look here at the body of our peacock. The back of the head is like a curved line. The neck is almost vertical, but slightly curved in the other direction. And then the back of the body is kind of a, another curve. It's almost like a very stretched out S. Do you see that? It's like an S that got stretched. And I want my head to start about here. So I'm going to draw it lightly first because I'm not going to erase. I'm going to draw a curved line. And it's going to curve a little bit back the other way. And then it's going to curve outwards. Like an S. There's the S shape. And then I'll just bring it right down to the bottom of the border. And then on the other side of the head, so there's my S. On the other side, I'm going to continue the front of the head. And I'm going to put a triangle here for the beak. And a black eye right in the middle of the head. And a little bit of a pattern around the eyes. There's a little bit of white around the eyes and the center of the beak. And then I'm going to come down. The front of the bird is like a long curved line. It's a long curved line. And I'm not going to worry about the feet because the legs and the feet are out of the picture. Up here I can make some of these feathers that look like lollipops on the top of the bird's head. And now I'm going to make some of these. I'm just going to draw this line darker so you can see it. I'll draw the body darker now. And you can do the same. You can go over your light lines with a heavier line. And at this point, I might change the shape just a little bit. Put a dark eye in there. Okay, and now I'm going to make some of these feathers, the smaller feathers, <clears throat> and we're going to do that by using a bumpy line. Do you remember the bumpy line? It goes out and comes back, out and comes back. We're just going to bump along the body. And then we're going to go bumping along the feathers. They almost look like scales on a fish. 
and then the ones on top st start pointing upwards a little bit. So we're just going to put some of these in. And then on the other side, we might see some as well. Okay, now we're ready for the big tail feathers. So I'm going to put a dot right in the middle of my paper. Just a little dot. We don't want it to be dark enough that everyone can see it. It's just to help guide your lines. And we're going to, from that dot, we're going to go over the body. And when we get to the part outside the body and the small feathers, we're going to draw a line all the way to the border. So we're going to start working around the peacock now. So from here, we're going to travel to these small feathers and go out to the border. We're going to go down here, past the small feathers and out to the border. From here, we're going to go past the small feathers and out to the border. From here, past the small feathers and out to the border. From here, past the small feathers out to the border. And I'm just trying to space out these lines. I'm going to turn my paper and I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm going to work all the way around until I come back to this point. So I'm going to go across the small feathers and out to the border the body, the small feathers, and out to the border. Cross the body and the small feathers, and out to the border. neck, out to the border, neck, head, out to the border, neck, head, lollipop feathers, and out to the border. See how I turn my paper? It really helps in drawing these lines. It looks like I have space for one more line here. Okay. So there's the drawing. I'm going to darken up these feathers. and our peacock is ready to color. Okay, so how am I going to color my peacock? I have different options. I can use colored pencils. And I have plenty of colored pencils. I have lots and lots of colored pencils. Or I could use pens. Ink pens are good fun too. They're nice and bright, but it takes a long time to color with pens, so I don't think I'm going to use pens because I have quite a lot of space here. I'm going to be using crayons. I find crayons cover a lot of ground fairly quickly. Not as quickly as paint, perhaps, but they're still fast compared to colored pencils. However, 
I will use colored pencils to lay out my patterns first. So I'm going to be starting with the colored pencil and I'm going to go every other feather with a certain pattern. And so let me start with pink this time. And I'm going to start maybe right here in this feather. And I'm going to work all the way around and come back to that feather. Actually, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start down here in the corner. And let me start with triangle. And maybe upside down triangle and right side up triangle. I'm even going to put a little dash in between. Okay, that's my pattern. Dash, triangle, dash, upside down triangle, dash, triangle. And you can choose a different pattern. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. Think of a really fun pattern that you can repeat a lot of times. Okay, so I've got this pattern and then I skipped a feather. I've got the same pattern. I'm going to skip a feather. I'm going to put the same pattern in this feather. And again, it's easier if you turn your paper. Turn the paper. Dash, right side up triangle, dash, upside down triangle, dash, right side up triangle. Now you don't have to do a pattern like this. You can do circle, 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 circle. You can make it easier than the one I'm showing you. This one is a little bit more complicated than circles only. Okay. You won't see all of this pattern because some of it's shaded by these um, feathers, the lollipop feathers. Dash, triangle, dash, upside down triangle, dash, triangle, dash, triangle, dash, upside down triangle, dash, triangle. This feather is a long one, so I can repeat a little bit more of the same pattern. Now I've got dash, triangle, dash, upside down triangle, dash, dash, triangle, dash, upside down triangle. And this will be my last one. Okay, so now I need a pattern for the other feathers. Or I could just draw them a single color like purple, 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 purple. But I think I'm going to do a pattern as well in these feathers. Let me see about... I'm going to use this green color and I'm going to be thinking circle, circle, big circle, 
circle, circle, big circle, 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 big circle, 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 big circle. And I'm going to continue that pattern. And you can think of some really cool patterns for your pattern peacock. And I am going to color these with crayon, but I find it helps to start with colored pencil because you can sharpen them. They're nice and sharp and they give nice crisp edges to your patterns. Then I'm going to take the crayon and actually color in the feathers with the crayons after I draw them with the colored pencil. Okay, now it looks like this. Now I'm going to start coloring in the body of my peacock. And what I used here is blue and turquoise and then a darker indigo blue at the edges. And that sort of gives the peacock a slight three-dimensional feel to it. So I've got indigo and blue and I want the turquoise. You can do your peacock different if you um, different colors if you want. You don't have to follow what I'm doing, but I'll show you how I did this. So I take the blue and I'm just going to go over the body and the head with blue. I'm going to leave the white showing around the eye. See, I can put the color on pretty fast. I'm going to leave the center here not quite as dark so I get sort of a three-dimensional look. I want it to be darker on the edges and lighter in the middle. So I'm not pressing down as hard to get the lighter blue. But if I go darker, if I press down harder on the edges, you can see that the color is darker on my bird. And also if I use a darker blue, the color will be darker on the bird. So now I'm using indigo, which is darker than blue, and I'm using it on the edges. And I'm going to put it up here around the head area, along the neck, And then the turquoise, I'm going to put in there as well. Real peacocks, the blue ones, there are some white ones as well, but the blue peacocks have this beautiful, almost 
turquoise feathers in their neck, head, and body. Let me just put some of that in. So I'm coming down to the border, but I'm not coloring the border. I'm going to keep it white up here on top of the head. Now for the beak, I'm going to be using a brown crayon, but you can use another color if you like. And I'm going to color the edges darker. And I can't forget these little feathers up on top. Now I'm going to work on these smaller feathers on the back of the body and I'm going to make them maybe yellow, green, and green, yellow, and maybe some green as well. Let's put some green in there. I'm going to go around the outside of the feathers in green. I'm going to take the yellow green and the green yellow. And place some of that color in there. And now we're left with the big feathers. So what color am I going to make my feathers? I think I'm going to use a red violet. And I think I'll use orange. You can choose your own colors. You don't have to do what I am doing. So for my green drawings, where my shapes were green, I'm going to be using red violet on the feather, and then I'll color the shapes green. And this part can take a little while, so just enjoy it. It's nice and relaxing. You don't have to ra uh, rush to get done quickly. Just enjoy the process.
Now you don't have to draw your patterns with colored pencil. You can do the whole thing with crayons if you like, or you can color the whole thing with colored pencils if you like. Although it will take a while with colored pencils. I'm not sure that shows up very well. I think I'll use red. So now I'm back to this one. I'm going to have green shapes. And I'm going to have red violet behind. Now you don't even have to color these shapes and you can leave the shapes white like I did in this other example, and that looks really nice too. You can either color the whole page, add color to the whole page, or you can leave some of the areas white. And if your colors end up not in the right place, don't worry about it. It'll still be beautiful. Just keep going. If you haven't had a chance to look at some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. You should take a look because we have some really fun videos about color and there's a paper sculpture video that's super fun. We also have some dance videos and some song videos. And we have all sorts of things. We even have some breakdance videos, drawing and painting. It's a lot of coloring in this project, but they do turn out beautifully. I like the orange and the blue color together. I love the blue of the body of the peacock and the orange color next to that blue. We've almost made it all the way around our peacock. Just a few feathers left.
Now when we get to the ones on top of the head, we'll have to be a bit careful because we have to get the colors in between these little lollipop feathers. I'm going to see some orange there. I'm going to see some orange there. This is our last feather with green dots and a red violet background. I've seen some beautiful peacocks by the students over the years. We've had some amazing patterned peacocks in this class. Okay, there we go. We are done with our patterned peacock. We have now two patterned peacocks. There we go. I hope you enjoyed this class and I hope you came up with some really cool patterns as well. Remember you can have patterns of repeating colors, repeating shapes, repeating lines, and even textures sometimes. So that's all from Miss Lisa for today. I hope I see you in the painting class tomorrow or at least next week for drawing again. Take care. Stay inside, enjoy your art, goodbye.